So we start, obviously, with the eye, okay? So here's a nice eyeball um, with, at the back, the retina, okay? So light comes in here, blood vessels and crap out here, and in the back, you have this band of photoreceptors. You have 100 million photoreceptors in each, at the back of each eyeball, detecting light, okay? Um, and then the retina, which is like this little piece here, blown up, has this three-layer structure. And it pains me not to go into that in detail because the retina is actually a proper little bit of brain. It's actually central nervous system. And it's very cool. There was a talk by the amazing Josh Sains from Harvard here a week ago, and it made me want to do a whole lecture on the retina, but then I decided I couldn't fit it. But if you ever have spare time to go read about a really cool neural circuit, I, I didn't get this until recently. It's like the retina, it's like film, it's capturing light, it's sending up to the brain. No, 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 no. The retina is doing lots of processing. And its circuit details are known in spectacular detail. The, the, each cell type is being described. There are now over 100 of them. The whole thing is largely genetically hardwired. It's just an amazing circuit where you can kind of see the computations unfold from the actual circuit. And we'll see some other examples of that shortly, but it's, it's one of the few cases where you can actually characterize a computation and the actual circuit that does it, and that's pretty cool. Okay, but we will give it short shrift here so that we can get up to the brain um, and just note a few things. So one thing that's worth knowing is that the fovea, um, this little dimple, I don't think that arrow is going to the right place. I think it's that little dimple right there. Um, has a particularly high density of um, photoreceptors, okay? Um, well, actually, it's a, it, the main thing that's distinctive about it is that the mapping between an individual photoreceptor and a retinal ganglion cell, these cells that then send information up the optic track into the brain, um, that there's only about five photoreceptors mapping to one retinal ganglion cell in the fovea at the center of gaze compared to out in the periphery where you have around 100 or more. And what that means essentially is you have higher resolution vision at the fovea than out in the periphery, okay? And you can see this in action if you fixate on my nose, fixate on the tip of my nose now, okay? Keep your eyes on my nose, no cheating, no looking out to the side, keep your eyes on my nose and say, okay, how many fingers am I holding up in the periphery? Shout it out, can you tell? Okay, was it a little hard? My arms aren't quite long enough for this demo at this distance. Okay, uh, I should have done three, it would have been harder, right? It's hard, right? Whereas if they're a little closer, keep looking at my nose, duh, easy, right? That's because you, um, you have higher resolution processing at the fovea than you do in the periphery, okay? All right, um, I just said all of this. So basically there's lots of processing that goes on in these three layers of the retina from the photoreceptors to these other layers um, coming up to the retinal ganglion cells. And the upshot of that um, is that the output layer of retinal ganglion cells, we've gone from 100 million photoreceptors to 1 million retinal ganglion cells. And so this is like a data compression system, right? We've got to send this visual information up to the brain. Sending 100 million wires up into the brain would be a problem, right? It would be a, thank you. Uh, anybody who wants a handout can come grab it here. Thanks, or, yeah. I'm reducing the number because I'm getting left over. So if anybody's feeling like they want more, you got to tell me. Um, and all the slides are posted on the Stellar site. Um, okay, so this is a data compression system. It enables us to just send a mere million wires up into the brain instead of 100 million wires, okay? And like other smart data compression systems, it's a smart one. It doesn't just take a random subset uh, of you know, one out of 100 of photoreceptors. It, it processes the information first. OK. Um, all right, so what does it do? Let's look at those retinal ganglion cells. I'm counting on you guys to stop me. I'm going with the recommended slightly faster clip on the understanding that you will stop me if I'm not being clear. OK? That's the, that's the contract here. OK. Um, so these retinal ganglion cells send their axons straight up into the brain. Okay, there are their axons coming out here. Their axons go into this, they go over the top of the retina, it's a crazy system, and out the optic tract there. Okay? All right. So let's take a slightly closer look. Here are these axons of the retinal, here's the three layers 
of the retina processing the information. Photoreceptors at the back, which is crazy, means light has to go through all the other processing layers before it gets to the photoreceptors. Um, but it works. Okay, and then those axons from the retinal ganglion cells here come out in a big bundle out the optic track. Everybody got that? Okay. Um, so who cares about all of that? Well, it had just, has this kind of cool consequence, which is that there is a hole in the photoreceptor array in your retina, right? There's a hole where all, the, all those bundles, all those fiber bundles have to go out the optic track, right? See, photoreceptors all along here and all along there, but a hole where the optic track goes out. Yeah, question? Oh, no, I was just... Trying to see your hole. Yeah. Yes, we're going to show you. Here it is. Okay, first question is, why don't you see it all the time? Why isn't there a big black spot? Okay, there isn't a big black spot because you have two eyes looking at the world. And where the hole lands in one eye, it doesn't land in the other. And, you, and so you don't even notice it. But you can notice it if you close one eye. Look at the F right here. Okay, so close your left eye and fixate with your right eye right on the F. You have to really hold your fixation still. If you jitter around or peek around, it won't work. But you have to get your, uh, uh, your eye on the F. Can you see the red dot? I'm not sure this distance is right. Does the red dot go away when you fixate on the F? No, it doesn't. Oh, damn, I didn't get the size right. Um, uh, let's see. Try fixating right there on my fingertip. That's probably, that's probably the wrong direction. It's the other direction. Other direction? Okay, right. Try over here. F fixate on my fingertip. Can you see the blue dots, but not the red dot? Yeah? Farther, okay, farther, okay. Okay, yeah, I know, you guys are different distances. Got it to work? Oh, way over here. Oh, the edge of the white, okay. All right. Idan, can you send me an email to fix this demo? It doesn't work in the size of a class. <laughs> okay, everybody got that? point is you see the blue dots, not the red dot. And that's because what we're trying to do is find out where is that hole in your retina. We try to stick that thing right in the hole and you actually don't see it. It shows you that there is a hole. Okay? There's a very interesting question aside from binocular overlap about why you're not more aware of that. Right? And one reason you're not aware of it is your brain makes assumptions and fills information in. And you can see that in principle down here, probably if you fixate over on my fingertip right here, um, close your left eye, look with your right eye and my fingertip at that red line. Does the gap in the red line disappear? Do you see a solid red line? Okay. That's your brain is making assumptions. Okay. Again, it's an ill-posed problem. The stuff that's in the, in the hole, the brain doesn't know what's there in that case. And it's making reasonable assumptions. And it's assuming that because there are these collinear lines on either side, there's probably a line in there. Okay. All right. So this is just fun and games for how you can see uh, the structure of your retina with simple low-tech demos. Okay, next, here's what happens when light comes into the eye. Was everybody watching? Nice, cool slide. Boom. Here's light coming into the eye, going to the back of the brain. And it bumps into those blood vessels. Like, yuck. How, how are we supposed to see with all those blood vessels in the way? Why doesn't that make a big mess? Okay. Well, we can look at this by here's another demo. Fixate with both eyes now at the dot in the center fixate really tightly. No sneaking peeks anywhere else, no jittering around. Just keep your eyes as locked, as, as still as possible right on that dot. Is anything starting to happen? Keep your eyes right on the dot. Is anything happening? What's happening? Poof! They go away. You notice if you cheat and make a little eye movement, boom, they come right back. So what's happening there is that your photoreceptors adapt. They're not interested in things that remain constant over time. They're interested in change. And so if you, if you uh, get rid of the change by having your eyes absolutely still, then that information fades. And that's what happens with the shadows from the big blood vessels that are sticking over the top. Those don't change over time. And so your visual system adapts to them. Make sense? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so now we know that these retinal ganglion cells are going to send information up the, up the optic tract, the axons of those cells, right up into the brain. What information do they send into the brain? Okay, so let's look at that. 
And the best way to look at that is with recordings uh, from neurons in animals. Okay, so here's a monkey with an electrode in the optic track. Remember, those are the axons of the retinal ganglion cells going up into the brain. Okay, so this monkey is staring at a dot in this case, and we're going to ask what can we learn uh, about what's represented by those retinal ganglion cells? What do they tell the brain? And so the key concept you need to know here is the concept of receptive field. Okay, so the, a receptive field is the part of space that makes a given neuron fire. Okay, so if this monkey is staring at a dot here, and we need to flash light over there to make one of those axons go, one of those neurons fire, that is a receptive field of that neuron. Make sense? A receptive field is a property of the stimulus, a location of, in the world that makes a given neuron fire. Okay, simple but important. Okay, and so if we record from those retinal ganglion cells and characterize what information they're sending up to the brain, we find that already at the level of the output of the retina, a bunch of interesting processing has happened. I hinted at this because we're going from 100 million photoreceptors to, 100, uh, to a million axons going up the optic track. What has happened with that processing? 